<laughs> Bye, you're on Mayhem News Live on YouTube and Google Plus. As you can see, there's only two of us here today. We've run into some uh, technical stuff we're working with. Probably, hopefully, get it fixed out. I'm going to turn this uh, music off now so we don't hear that anymore. All right, well, we're here. We're up. Uh, we kind of moved to it a little faster than uh, we really wanted to because um, pretty much uh, we were having problems with Block Talk Radio. Yeah, that so, was ridiculous. So we kind of had to hurry up and you know make this thing work. So um, so far it's working great compared to what the other did. Um, I'm here with Stacy Lynn. Uh, you want to say hello there, Stacy? Hi. Ready for your close up? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to see if I can invite Dave now to. Um, Fingers crossed. See if it'll let him join now. I don't think because it wasn't active. And uh, we may have Dave Potato, so all the ladies will be happy that Dave is here. Hopefully, if not. Uh, Dave is working on a trip here to the United States. He's going to buy a new computer, so me and him will be live broadcasting through Raw and SmackDown and some other stuff. So, um, all right. Um, ask Dave, did he get that invite? Oh, is there a link to Chuck? Yeah, he can go to our YouTube channel. Hey, just go to the YouTube channel. He's broadcasting live at the YouTube channel. All right. Um, <laughs> Well, now, this is, uh, normally we did NASCAR and gaming. Uh, this right here is just wrestling. Uh, the other two shows are, uh, we're waiting for our NASCAR guy. He's going to get some internet at home. So, that right there is going to let us know what's going on. And, um, well, we're going to have, we've got a big show today. We've had a lot, um, a lot of stuff going on since the last time we had a show. Oh, yeah. Um. But we are now on YouTube. We will be here every Tuesday, 5 o'clock uh, Central Time. That's 11 o'clock UK. Uh, you can follow us here on um, Mayhem News Live um, on our YouTube channel, uh, either one. Uh, we also have a uh, community that you can follow and uh, send us suggestions. Um, I will be posting that stuff next week uh, on the screen. And if you uh, will look at the video when I post to YouTube, I will be adding some stuff to it. Um, we're going to cover four things while we're here. We're going to cover all the major um, wrestling outlets, and we're going to cover wrestling, uh, basically the um, headlines. You know, like stuff that's just wrestling. Period, not particularly mean anything to any one certain entity such as WWE or TNA. Um, we recently, TNA Wrestling has taken their their weekly show, Impact Wrestling, uh, TV tapings on the road. Uh, they're in the same position, we've mentioned this before, as um, WCW was. And or actually, Raw was when WCW and them were battling. So we know what in, what happened to WWE. So uh, I think they're going to get a lot more uh, stuff come on uh, and get a lot more, you know, viewers because now everybody that's actually coming to see them actually bought a ticket. So so don't you agree there, Stacy? Oh yeah. Uh, and I think this, I believe the shows are better too. Um, I think they're really a lot better. Fans are interactive, and um, but um, it's like uh, something just. You wondered what that was. My son, our other co-host, handed me his little cup. So if you wonder what that was, uh, wonderful live YouTube. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but we found out that apparently, uh, the way Dave was trying to connect um, on his iPod, it's not gonna let him join here. So need him to be doing some live tweeting through. Uh, live stuff through some of the wrestling shows. So, um, okay. all right. Well, that was our first headline of the, the week. There's been a lot going on, a lot going on. Uh, their first TV debut through TNA was in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, 
and uh, from what I understand, they had a huge they had a huge show out. I mean, it was they were packed, and sold out, and um, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, I think they went a little too far with the aces and eights thing, but. You know, come on, Stacy. You know you want to tell us what you think of the aces and eights. <laughs> I, I said. I don't know. I just. I, know. Um, I think just they just need to end that as soon as possible. I think it's gone on long enough. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised it's carried on this long. I mean, I just don't understand. How far they're going to take it? We're going to get to that here in a minute. Um, some other uh, wrestling notes. Um, the last Raw, last week's show on Raw. Um, what WrestleMania wasn't? That show was pretty over the top. Um, they, the fans, pretty much made the show excellent. I mean, oh, yeah. they really did. I actually like Fandango now. Well, I like his music. <laughs> yeah. I'm having problems. This thing don't want to switch back and forth automatically. So. <coughs> it won't pop up on here, though. I got one viewer. But I don't know. Hello, viewer. <laughs> I'm a dork. I know. <laughs> but, um. I mean, the crowd. <coughs> I noticed that more and more, like the crowd just started to follow that crowd the way they can always say, "Oh, look, we've done this too. We tried to make the show better this way." I think they need to interact more like that. They always should have been like that, though. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Ah. I don't know why I won't let Dave in here, but I the, the the way those fans did and the ones from Lon London tried tried to uh, do their best to uh, match them, but I don't think they did. They did a pretty good job, but they, it's just um, I don't think no one's gonna be able to match that crowd though. Yeah, um, that crowd they, needs a Slammy Award. <laughs> Yeah, I have a feeling you'll probably see that before. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm, I'm having problems with our automatic switching here. So, um, just uh, be patient with us. You may have to watch the small screen back and forth. So, uh, well, this is the first time yeah. we do this, so I mean, they need to bear with us. Give us a little yeah. credit. Um, but, uh, some of these notes I'm not even going to cover because it's been so long ago. Um, I guess you can you know cover now, the stuff that happened with the Ryback. Yeah. Um, CM Punk, um, you know, just walked off on stage the other day, walked out. You know, well, I found some news that's been going on. Apparently, he has an injury to his knee. Um, Probably the one he had surgery on. But he's having a lot of pain. So. In his lower leg, it's not actually the knee itself; it's in the lower leg. So, despite a number of injuries, uh, he has sustained a, an ACL and another uh, another torn ligament. Um, before the leg injury, Punk was already planning to take time off after WrestleMania because he was mentally burnt out. And you know, there's probably some of the older guys that's going to say, "Well, you know, he never got time off, but he was getting a lot of heat from the." Uh, Paul Bearer stuff. Oh yeah, he got a lot of heat from so much. I mean, yeah. it could also I mean, this might some... also give him a dare I say it a face turn, like probably turning away from Paul Heyman maybe. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. know. It says uh, doctors are advising him to stay out of the ring at least six weeks. Uh, he will not be at this Monday's Raw from England, which we know he wasn't. Uh, as soon as uh, WWE asked him to return. Will likely depend on how the ratings are in the next few weeks. So, yeah. That's Let's our ghost co host, people. Yeah. You want us to get up here and say something? Come on. <laughs> say hey. <laughs> yes, we have a fourth guest host, and that is my son, Seth. So you will hear him in the background. So just everybody say, he says, I'm saying hey. 
<laughs> You've been most likely heard, but probably never seen. <laughs> yeah. But um, he loves to see. Oh, there he is. Yeah. There he goes. Right I can see. Lean over and say hello. No, you gotta be still. Say, say hey. Okay. <laughs> hey. I don't know. Maybe. Go over there. To, go to Mama. Go over there and lay down. Um, he needs some attention. Oh yeah. Uh, he said I have to have my attention now. So um, but yeah, this is this is the first show. Uh, I mean, we're gonna have some problems. It's actually supposed to switch back and forth, and I accidentally clicked one of the screens to look at something to make sure the graphic was showing it right. And now I don't know how to turn it back over where to go off. Okay, so moving right along. Impact Wrestling. We're actually gonna follow the shows as they happen during the week. Uh, Impact Wrestling is on a Thursday. Since our show is on Tuesday, it is the first show of the week for us. Um, uh, this thing with um, AJ Styles has been going on. Uh, does it feel like you've seen it before, Stacy? Um, think about think about it. Okay, he's been he's been promoted as not knowing whether he's a face or heel, whether he's part of Aces and Eights or not. Does it sound familiar? That's been so overdone. Yeah, but there's really one big storyline I'm looking for. Think about it. Think about who's in charge of TNA and who's also on there with him. All right, I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, there was a time that Sting was asked where his loyalties lie. Was he with WCW or was he with the NWO? AJ Styles is being asked the same thing. Are you with the Aces and Eights or are you with TNA? Um, it is the same storyline. It does not surprise me that TNA is using it because they have Hulk Hogan as their general manager. Of course, we all know oh, of that, course. You know, Bischoff and everybody in the background is, is still there. But um, So I'm thinking that if they go the same way that it happened in WCW, AJ is not going to join the Aces and Eights. He is going to be a steamroller for TNA. Um, I have a feeling that, um, you know, that that's where they're going to go with it. Uh, he is going to be one of TNA's. Seth, it's not your time to talk here. Okay? <laughs> he wants to talk to. I think he's going to be one of the shining lights as Sting was for the WCW. The question is, is who is the other night with the Aaron Taylor? <laughs> Seth said, I'm going to get my two cents in, and I don't care. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, He's saying what he thinks about the aces and eights. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's put the bullshit goggles on and say that when we look at TNA, we're seeing WCW, and the Aces Eights are the NWO, and now I don't have to actually say the same old shit different day. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. Um, but, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, all I can say is TNA, if you're watching this, which it would be nice if you were, but, you know, hey. Um, we want abyss. We want abyss. We want abyss. It's simple as that. We need to bring this character back. Don't get me wrong. I like Joseph Clark, but we need the monster abyss. I mean, we really do. Um, and it truly. I lost my microphone. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> but uh, we, we, he. I have a feeling that it's going to come to that point that it's going to be. More than likely, Matt Morgan, uh, Abyss, uh, Jeff Hardy, and several others that are going to come back. And, and we'll, I just don't know how they're going to pull it off. Um, I think Stacy will agree with me, won't you, Stacy? <laughs> uh, who else are they going to pull in? 
I mean, look at the people that they have in, um, in the Aces and Aces. You've got d -Barn. You've got Willie Ray. I mean, you've got all of these big stars out of their roster. Who's left? I mean, do they have a hold of somebody in the, the back room somewhere? You know? I don't know. It's like next thing you know, the whole roster is going to walk out and be an Ace of Knights. Yeah. I, I'm just wanting, and I actually said something to uh, uh, Hogan's daughter on TN, on Twitter. I said, hey, tell your dad we want a piss. That is all. Except maybe that he could get the, the cast from Sons of Anarchy to come out and beat the hell out of the Aces and Aces. That would be really cool. Not a, because, you know, since we're having Sons of Anarchy withdrawal, it would be cool to see them on TV in between. But, you know, it's probably not going to happen. Um course not. But I want to say something to Taz, and don't get me wrong, I respect Taz except the fact that he's in the Aces and Aces. Uh, I think it's too bad that he can't wrestle anymore, or he isn't wrestling anymore. But I hate to tell you, Taz, every state in the United States has their own flag, not just Texas. Sorry. Even Louisiana does too. Yeah, we need to do some fact checking just a little bit. I knew that when well, I was like, I have a feeling that he said it on the fly, so you know. But I had to yeah. poke, I had to poke fun at it. Um. All right, we're gonna move on to SmackDown. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna try to do cover at least each show at least fifteen minutes, and then the last fifteen minutes will be you know. <laughs> um. Sue Ziggler, you know, winning the world title, which I think was a good idea. Um, it really was a good idea. Uh, Ziggler is a great heel. Um, I'm like Dave. Uh, I'm, and I'm pretty sure Stacy feels the same way. I'm pretty much fed up with the three amigos. Uh, you know, AJ and Big E. I think they need to. Now, I wouldn't mind if it was just Ziggler and Big E. I mean, Ziggler and uh, AJ. You know, because they had a man, woman. You know, people. They had been people together. It's you know, just a champion like, and his wo woman, or a champion and his girl, or his wife, or something. But it's Ruby just that. Like yeah. So exactly, he's like the the third wheel. Just the. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And it's I, not that I don't like Biggie. It's just he needs a different Atari gimmick. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he that needs a. Yeah, or at least make it like Ryback's, where it goes down toward his knees a little bit. It's like he's trying to put a onesie on a. I don't even know how old he is. It's like yeah. he's trying to wear like a newborn onesie. It's like no. Yeah. <laughs> and, but you know, he he has won the world title, and I really think it's a good idea. Uh, I think the battle between him and uh, Del Rio. And the multiple people now that have shown their time, uh, trying to uh, go after him. You've got uh, Chris Jericho, uh, which him and Chris Jericho had a match on Raw this week. Basically, if Jericho won, he got a, a four-way four -way match. And um, it would have been a fatal four-way, which we know is not very... Um, Definitely not very uh, uh, favorable for the champion, you know, for uh, him to be have a fatal four way. Usually they lose. So, um, but it seems Ziggler, uh, and then Jack Swagger. Uh, there is something I want to talk about with Swagger. Uh, here's what I don't understand Jack Swagger was caught with marijuana while he was in Mississippi. Not only did he not lose, his uh, title shot. From what I understand, he didn't even get in trouble. But yet, That's... one of the Funkadactyls got a little uh, got a little drunk on the English tour and got sent home. Now, what? What? That isn't right. Last what? time, okay, I live way in Louisiana, but I mean, bear with me. This last time I checked. Alcohol is more legal than that. Yeah. I know it's getting legalized I mean, in some states, but I mean, come on now. Common sense. It's not right. 
that just because he had a world title shot, that you know, just because Jack Swagger had a white title shot, that he didn't get in trouble, but she got sent home on the tour. Now I can understand not letting her compete if she was she was under the influence of alcohol. But having her sent home like a like a child and not even you know, Jack Swagger didn't even get a slap on the wrist as far as we know. They didn't even put him down as a violation of the world. That's wellness. a bad move with WWE <clears throat> because I can bite them in the ass later. Yeah, and here's what I don't understand. It's just like they got rid of Mickey James because they said she was late to for the bus. Now this is what was tweeted by several people. Stop now. Okay. And uh, this is what was tweeted by uh, several people that knew her that they basically got on to her because she was late to the bus. And then there were a lot of rumors, people talking about uh, it was because of her weight. <coughs> Which I hate to tell you in the WWE. Um, you know, and I like AJ. AJ is a nice looking woman. But she's too skinny. She needs Way too bones. skinny. Yeah. I mean, she's in good shape. Now, she's not all just bone. She's got a lot of muscle. But she's lost. She's gotten so muscular to the point where it makes her look unhealthy. You know, I mean, but I'm sorry. There's a reason again, why. There's Caitlin. Women, and then yeah. people are starting to dog her, saying she has too much. So it's like people don't know where to lie. Because yeah. all it is, the divas, I mean, all they are is just a pretty face. And I think that's kind of sad. And it kind of yeah. downgrains them a little bit. But And I'm actually surprised that somebody like Tamina would actually put up with that. Because what she's went through and who her dad is and... You know, I'm actually surprised. It would have surprised me if Tamina left. But um, but you've got um, you know, and WWE, you just let this go. Like you know, they kind of just well, maybe they'll forget it. And uh, there's a guy on Twitter that when he sees Jack Swagger, he doesn't say "we the people." He said "we the people." <laughs> mm. Hey, yeah. I mean. WWE is just showing everyone, like, okay, you can get in trouble, but as long as you have yeah. a promotion, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, they actually talk bad about TNA for letting, uh, okay. They actually talk bad about TNA for letting Jeff Hardy come back. But, you know, Jeff Hardy went through rehab and stayed in rehab the whole time. So I don't understand. It just don't make no sense. Um, but with now with the um, shield, something WWE is playing smart. They had the shield uh, try to attempt to attack the Undertaker last week on Raw, um, and we got to see the brothers of destruction, brothers of destruction, re you know reunited uh, with an addition of uh, the Goat Man himself. Uh, Daniel Bryan, and you know that was worth the raw right there. It was pretty much the best part of raw. Um, you know, so they're playing it smart. Then they had them try to attack, uh, you know, Triple H, and you had Team Hell No come down again. So here's the thing: they're being smart. They're not actually letting you know who they're going to try to get rid of next. Seth, quit. He's trying to show off. Yeah, I know you're trying. Well, here, say hello. Say hello. We've hey. got plenty of time. Okay. Yeah, I know he just loves to see himself on camera. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he likes to stare himself in the mirror. My son's a ham; he can't help it. Look who his daddy is. Anyway, um, but you know, they, they tried to attack him. Uh, they're not letting it be obvious who they're going to let the shield take out next. Um, the match on Raw. And I agree with the fans. You can be in the picture, but let Daddy be seen too. <laughs> this is not Mayhem News Live. This is Seth is live. Yeah, but um, you know, it's kind of funny that you know they're they're actually 
normally they're so they're so predictable, and now they're actually being sneaky and not actually letting you know who they're facing. So, you know, they're actually going to go after. Um, you know, uh, very smart. I, I think it's smart. But now, uh, now then we have the feud between Ziegler, which I, I'm wondering if they kind of stop that now. And I realize why they they put Fandango up against, you know, Jericho. I mean, Jericho was on Dancing with the Stars. Who better to face a dancing wrestler than wow, Jericho? Wow, that just like went over my head. I I. And last night he actually danced with the he, dancer. He stole the girl. That's what made me laugh the most. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. I forgot he was on Dancing with the Stars as well. How could I forget that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, okay. He stopped there and kind of made that look toward her. You know, <laughs> I was like, wow. Well, it makes sense. I know. know. Like, she's like, no, no. And she's just like, oh, yeah, bye. Okay. See ya. <laughs> hey, he's a pretty good dancer, too. <laughs> it's a little look he gave. I don't know if it was a wink he gave or something when he got close to her. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was pretty good. And, um, but, let's see. And I have a, I'm wondering, you know, they're having a triple threat. I don't think the possibility for a four way is over. I think that may, it just depends on if they're going to go ahead with a fandango and really push that thing. I think maybe they're going to, you know, yeah, because if well, the fans respond well to him at least. Well, his, to his music at least. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm gonna be honest. I couldn't stand the Fandango character when he first came out. When he first came out. Now I knew from you know talking to Goldust and listening to Goldust talk about the guy that plays Fandango, and his name escapes me right now. But Goldust was saying this guy can wrestle. That's like the people that think Cena can't wrestle. Um, but, you know, <laughs> and what about this? Okay, we have to give it, out of the last two weeks, Raw, Raw, Raw episodes, we have to say that the person that deserves the, uh, the bragging is Ryback. I mean, Ryback took Cena down. I mean, come on. His speech after doing so was like, I agree with Dave. You know, if you don't like Ryback now, I'm a Cena fan. Don't get me wrong. But I'm going to be kind of split. I like, and you heard it first here, okay? Heal Ryback. Hashtag, oh yes, hashtag heel right back. You heard it here first. I uh, haven't seen anybody use it yet, and I'm pretty sure St I can see Stacy wiggling. She has, she wants to talk about the right back. <laughs> it's like I was, you know, it's like okay when he started saying the promo, you know, he started. I'm like, okay, they're gonna make him actually turn heel. Okay, let's see how he does. And then when he started, you know, really talking and saying. Talking down on Cena, I was just like, oh my god, like this guy can talk. Mm -hmm. So, it's not the it, it, it's not the first thing that you say that all he can, all he can do is eat. <laughs> well, he could definitely talk. I, I, just, I hate to pick at him and point this out, but I notice that whenever he talks, when he moves his mouth a certain way, his ears wiggle. I don't yeah. know. Seth does the same thing. If he moves his face a certain way, his ears will wiggle. They go. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because he has no hair, but just whenever he does it, I just start laughing. I'm just like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Cena, and, and then, you know, they. It, it, I think it stands up how good that Ryback is for him to be teamed up against Cena. Right after Cena took on The Rock, and you know, there's a lot of talk about The Rock. Um, he's kind of hinted that he's not sure if he's going to come back. This, I mean, I don't know if y'all understand what injury he got, 
but he had a muscle, okay, a, a muscle on the bone or a sur the surface of the body has two points, an insertion and an origin. The origin is where the bone, the muscle actually starts and, and an insertion is the other side where the muscle actually attaches itself to the structure of the body. Uh, he actually had that muscle in his stomach tore loose. So you can think about, when you think about Triple H's quad coming loose, it actually rolled down around his knee, inside of his leg, okay? So, uh, sorry about the face. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, it's the the REM thing just, it just kind of slipped about in it. there. Just Sorry, think, for y'all that don't think, know, I was an REM for you know over over ten years. Sorry, that just kind of slipped in. But you need to understand what it means. It's like there's no way you could fake that in injury. Yeah, when Triple H, not only did his quad get tore, and it rolled down on top of his knee, but he finished the match. Ah, so. There's, there's talk that The Rock have, has, are, are seriously thinking that he may not return. <coughs> yes. Stacy just had someone po poking in from above. Hi. <laughs> she didn't anyway, realize we're on um, YouTube. Like but um, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's just kind of interesting that now, you know, Dave posted a picture earlier today, on, I think it was like this week sometime, it said that um, doesn't show up, gets put down about it, and then when he does come back and is almost almost every show before WrestleMania, he still gets put down. They're calling him part-time, so, but uh, we'll, we'll have to continue that discussion later. Uh, we're going to move on to Raw, and Raw has had a lot of things go on. Uh, here's something now. Okay, Heyman tells everyone that Lesnar wants Triple H at Extreme Rules. And if you don't know what a rubber match is, okay, you know that they both won a match. Okay? So that makes Brock Lesnar's record in pay-per-views one and two. He lost against Cena. He lost against Triple H the second time. And then he won a match. So that's called a rubber match. They're going to see if they can break the tie. Okay. Uh, here's what I want to ask Lesnar. So apparently you want to go one and three. Laugh out loud. Um, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Lesnar, and, and this is why Ryback is so, is so awesome on the mic. Lesnar stinks so bad. That he, they have to bring in Paul Heyman. Now, in reality, that's actually good for the fans because we get to hear a mic genius like uh, Heyman actually get on the mic and talk. And here's how good he is. And this is going to be a reminder. And we've said this before. When Heyman walked out the first time to introduce himself as uh, Lesnar's representative, 90% of the crowd, or at least 50%, had no clue who he was. In 10 minutes, he had everyone in that crowd eating out of his hands. That's how good he is. A Lesnar, yes, he is a big guy. He is nothing like what he was before. The idea that they still call him a beast. Yeah, could he walk in this house and maybe... In a wrestling with wrestling rules, beat me up. Yeah, uh, with me cheating like most people would do to save their life. No, he is not the beast. Whoa! Don't turn the light off, son. We just had an eclipse of the sun for some reason. Anyway, um, but um, leave the light alone now. Okay, sit down. Okay, yeah. But anyway, Heyman comes out, and this is where it gets funny. He thinks, because of an email that he received from Triple H, that Triple H is not in London. Of course. 
What There's does a, he do? Let me think about email. You can send an email and be right on the side of the person. <laughs> yeah. Apparently he didn't know that. But he sends an email to, to Heyman saying, hey, I'm not going to be there uh, because of my injuries. And, and you know, uh, I'll talk to you next week. So Paul Heyman, being the person that he is, and being in character, basically comes out and starts to badmouth Triple H. And I knew when they started moving the camera where they could see the entranceway, I was like, Triple H is there. I knew and that. sure enough, there it was. Now, if you if you heard a, a small clicking sound and a rush of wind when Triple H walked out, I will explain to you what that is. That was Heyman's anus snapping shut and <laughs> sucking itself up into his throat. <laughs> he will probably not crap for a month. And I think Stacy would, would agree. <laughs> <laughs> or either that or whenever he talks he just have he just speak more crap like he normally does <coughs> yeah that might uh, also happen too and then when I saw Triple H start to grab uh, Heyman's tie I was like oh no it's not going to end well for Heyman it never uh, does the pedigree like the... heard round the world <laughs> Uh, that was not but, earthquake people. That was just Paul Heyman getting brutally hurt. Yeah. Uh, but um, so it's going to be interesting that they're going to do an extreme rules match, and uh, this yeah, is going to happen. And then uh, something else has happened on <coughs> Raw. Uh, Cesaro dropped the title, the U.S. title, to Kofi Kingston. And I don't know why WWE did this. He had this big scenario where he stated that he couldn't be beaten. No American could beat him. No American could take the title. I don't know why they can. I don't know why they didn't just let Jack Swagger take the U.S. title. It's not like he couldn't win after the they, WWE title. That but, would have made more sense because he's the All American American. Okay, we'll let him get the title. You know, they give it to someone who is not an American. Yeah. Technically, storyline wise. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know if it's just me, but I find that Kofi Kingston, where he where he lives from, where he comes from, like it changes weekly. Yeah, because when he first came out, he had a uh, <laughs> he, he had a Jamaican accent, and uh, yeah, and then I remember when he started talking normally, and Triple H was like, "Hey." Aren't you Jamaican? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you were Jamaican. <laughs> anyway, uh, but um, all right. CM Punk comes out with Heyman, and they actually start hollering for the Undertaker, and you see CM Punk walk off stage, you know, and actually show, uh, dare I say it, humility. Um, he was really humiliated that he did not beat the Undertaker. Oh, duh. And, which we knew wasn't going to happen anyway, but the fact that he, you know, he he walked out, he was he seemed humbled to a point, which kind of makes it maybe that because they wanted to explain why he he walked off and you know disappeared for however long he's going to be gone. Um, maybe you know, maybe they're going to make him come back as a changed man who's seen the error yeah. of his ways. He's going to stop counting down his imaginary. Title. I don't yeah. know. You're probably uh, looking at me like she's cutting down she, CM Punk, but yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stacey Lynn is a CM Punk fan, but uh, their handling of the somewhere. of the Paul Bearer uh, thing kind of changed the way she looks at CM Punk, <laughs> which well, not really CM Punk. Changed but the way I look at his character, really. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the man is fine, but you know the way they did that character. Of course, you know he had to go along with it. He couldn't tell. But no, I'm not do doing that. Like because, how, but um, you have to know that WWE, Paul Bearer's family went along with this, okay? They signed off as well as did The Undertaker with everything that was that went on, okay? If it hadn't happened that way, it, you wouldn't have saw it on TV. 
So, but I just I really like how Undertaker yeah. still like wearing the same tights. Yeah, I love that. I mean the side. And of he actually TV. had added to his tights. He has yeah. an urn. Uh, at WrestleMania, that. he had an urn and then had had his uh, the stuff around it. I thought that was pretty neat. And then the the little thing with uh, Daniel Bryan and. Um, came before you know you need to get a hold of him well it's not like he carries a cell phone you know <laughs> whatever you do don't hug him and the fact that daniel bryan went like he was gonna he's upset he couldn't hug the undertaker <laughs> um now they're talking that? about they're talking about the okay taker just stuck out of my get off yeah something else uh i promise next week uh, i won't click on any of the pictures so we will automatically switch pictures when one of us talks, and I will find out how to switch that back on if something takes something happens. So, um, you know, yeah, I will actually get on here so we can correct that. Uh, something I want to talk about: Shield. Okay, they hinted around that there's a fourth member of the Shield. I think there's going to be there's going to be six. Okay, the reason why I say that is there's S H I E. LD. There's six letters in the word shield. So I think there's eventually going to be six members of the shield. Which means, unfortunately, we're going to. No, you don't have some kind of little tie in with someone uh -huh. on WWE. Yeah, I, I truly think. I, I just. When they started talking about four, I told Kim last night, I thought, there's going to be six. There's going to be six of them. I have a okay, feeling. And, you know, uh, and I'm wondering if it now. Here's the question: Will it, is it going to be, uh, is it going to be some of the people that's already on the roster, or is it going to be some of the people from, you know, FCW and Next, you know, or NXT? Excuse me, Next. I'm going to have to stop it calling. It would be nice next. to. It would be actually nice for them to pull somebody from there, because I mean. Yeah. It would be. I, I, I agree. Because, I mean, who, what was his name? Uh, Bo Dallas? Yeah, with he, the, he really did well. he got. Yeah. He really did well. I don't know if they could bring him into the shield or not. You know. But I mean, uh, like, just, yeah. look how they just brought him in and everyone just took him automatically. But yeah. I don't, I have a feeling it's going to probably surprise us with everything. But now you remember we, we we called it here first that there's going to be six shield members. There's going to be another three added. We don't know who. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, I think you know uh, there's been a lot of big names dropped uh, that possible for possible return to the WWE. Uh, Batista. Now, Batista would fit right in. He was in Evolution. Um, Could think you about imagine it. Dress him up. Again, Dress him up with, in a black outfit. He would fit right in. Um, there's been a lot of, and I, I dare say a rumor, because there's been a lot more than just talk. And, uh, sorry, uh -huh. I, to, I missed up the camera. <laughs> anyway. Um, kind of a little Super Bowl moment there. Yeah. Hey, it was like, hey, we're in the we're in the uh, Superdome. Never mind. Sorry, <laughs> I had to poke the Superdome a little bit now. Come on, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, you got Batista. Uh, and speaking of returns, hey, if you don't follow the real Boogeyman on Twitter, he's got a big thing. He has took the the uh, followings of Zack Ryder and took to social media, and ah, uh, stop me. You're gonna hurt yourself. I'm just wrestling no. moves. Sit down. Okay. It's like that. They look up to wrestle too. Yeah, uh, but the real boogeyman has took to Twitter and and in Facebook. And I don't, I'm not sure if he's on Facebook, but I know he's on Twitter, and he's trying to get himself put back on uh, the WWE roster. I'm not gonna sit back now.
Because I never forget, and my, bro and my brother and I, we both, like, every time we eat spaghetti, <coughs> we think about this. The first time he comes out, we're sitting in the living room, and we're watching, you know, this guy debut, and he just shoves worms in his mouth, and we're sitting there eating a big old sp plate of spaghetti, and we're just like... <laughs> so now every time but, we eat spaghetti, my brother looks at me and goes, Boogie Man. You know, like, so you check him out, and you know, I'll give everybody this. He'll be this there somewhere. Dinner. We'll find it. Here, just a minute. Hold on. Let me get a Twitter real quick here. Um, I think it's real boogie, but I want to make sure. Come on. My Twitter app is being a little slow. The wonderful thing, wonder things of of live radio. Let's move on over here to tweet at us back. Here. Or just live broadcasting in general. Yeah. Yeah, it is at real boogie. That's at R E A L. B O G E Y, and uh, give him a follow. B O O G E Y. Yeah, B O O G E Y. Yeah, real boogie, and uh, you know, let him know that you're, uh, you know, you know. Matter of fact, I have to give it to him. He gave us a Twitter. He gave us a shout out on Twitter. So hey, oh, you know, give you. the man a follow. Uh, I think uh, he's not past his prime. And I believe the WWE needs to listen because they've got some people that they've gotten rid of here in the last three or four years that needs to come back. Uh, gold dust, uh, people that's been gone a while. Um, you know, boogeyman. You've got people that could actually make, um, you know, Raw actually interesting again. I'm gonna help uh, Shane on this one, Melina. Yeah. You know, I yeah, I, I think you'll get a kick out of that. The fact <laughs> that gave, but uh, you know, they've got a lot, lot of people that take it back back in, into the show that will make it a lot better. Uh, it's been so long since last night. I nearly fell asleep during Raw, and I'm sorry. And yeah, I've been sick, but you know, but I'm sorry. It was boring. It was really boring. Uh, it had its points now. When I watched it today, I said, well, you know, I would have probably wanted to see that last night. But it, they need to work it out to where they bring these people back. So don't forget, follow Real Boogie Man, okay? Real Boogie. That's R-E-A-L-B-O-O-G-E-Y with the at symbol at the front. Give them a follow. If you want to follow Dustin Rhodes or Gold Dust, that is all caps. Dustin underscore Rhodes one. Uh, make him do. That's make him do. Uh, .com. Okay, breaking up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, missing with the uh, computer. And okay. there we go. I'm following him now. Okay. Stop. But um, you can follow him. He's also he sells all kind of uh, uh, stuff. I mean, he's got shirts, hoodies, books. Uh, every book is usually signed. You get an autograph picture uh, on his website. You can go to those pages. I have those pages linked. So. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's uh, Gold Dust. Yeah. Okay. And then real yes. boogie is you know. He's got a lot of stuff too. You just follow him on Twitter. He talks about it all the time. He talks I'm about where he's going to be if he's got any, where he, if he's going to have any appearances. He lets everybody know through Twitter. And I'm going to so help him out to read his book Crossroads. I really liked it. I read it twice. Yeah. That's how and, good it is. You know, uh, Boogeyman follows a lot of fans too. So uh, somebody else that follows a lot of fans, and that's hardcore Bob Holly. I don't have his. Uh, Twitter with me right now, oh, so nice. I'll have to tell you that on a later day. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, indie wrestling. We're down to the last 10 minutes. I don't have much. I know that uh, ROH nice. had some problems with their internet pay-per-view. Uh, they issued a uh, issued a uh, apology that said they strive to deliver first-class professional wrestling and only the finest in-ring action for our fans. This includes uh, for providing impeccable broadcasts on our product 
in every format we offer and live IPV streams are absolutely no exceptions. So continue to watch ROH, ROH, ROH and I'll get it out here in a minute. And um, back them up. Something else you need to do, you can go to TNA uh, Gut Check Challenge <clears throat> in the fifth bracket. They're voting now. Chance Profit is being voted on right now. He is the leader in bracket five. Uh, each there'll be one person from each bracket, and then they'll have an overall vote, and they'll start breaking them down, getting them thinning it out, you know. So, uh, kind of give him. We actually did an interview, which I'm going to try to get another one so we can actually have a video uh, interview. Um, you haven't seen his YouTube channel. You just can't really turn the, his promos off on YouTube. They're just that good. Uh, I can understand why he wants to go to TNA. Uh, there, he would, his character would probably be a little more protected. Uh, but I would like to see him in the WWE. It would be a nice thing if you were actually picking this up on YouTube. We want to see you in WWE too. But anyway, that's probably gonna be, not going to happen for a, <coughs> a while. Uh, you will excuse me. I have to give me something. Voice is getting a little scratchy. But uh, we will be here every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, that's 4 p.m. Pacific and um, 6 p.m. on uh, like around Michigan and then 11 o'clock at night for uh, UK. <coughs> if I mean, you hopefully. cannot be at the show, you can actually view us on the YouTube channel, it will automatically upload our show to the YouTube channel, so you will be able to see. Um, uh, you will actually be able to see the show, whether you can be here live or not. Um, I will also post the link on the Mayhem News Live webpage, which is mayhemnewslive.wordpress.com. And then also on our mayhem slash news dot com page, so you will have five or four places that you can actually see it. If you follow me on Google Plus, you can actually see it live on there as well. So we will have more opportunities for people. And I want to get this viewer thing up here. You know, we only have one viewer right now, and most people are working right now. So, but I'm hoping we can get it done. I want to thank Stacy and Dave and, and Chuck and everybody that's been uh, pushing this stuff down. If we're pushing it down your throat, we apologize. But we're trying to move from one format to the other. Um, in reality, I should have went to YouTube in the first place, but they were not offering the Hangouts to the public <coughs> at that time. So, uh, don't get me wrong. Blog Talk did us good. We had over 17,000 people listen to our show in a little over it, less than a year that we were on. We started on September the 18th, and we went till the week before last, and we had over 17,000 people listen to our show. So I can't say enough. If you don't have the ability to get on YouTube or do a hangout, Block Talk Radio is worth doing. You just have to keep it. Getting, I had another option, so we went to the other option. Um, so, you know, you can follow us at Mayhem News. That's at Mayhem News on Twitter, or you can follow us at, at Mayhem News Live on Twitter. Uh, Dave Potato eighty five uh, on Twitter, and also Chuckles HD on Twitter. And then mine and Stacy's are actually up on the screen. Yes, and I'm not sure that we even know how to spell the name right. Yeah. Uh, so make sure you put the I E, not the Y. Yes. Or the E Y. Of course, my name has to be spelled different. Um, but you know, you can follow us there, and if you go to my our the Mayhem News Live page on Google Plus. Uh, you can search it under looking under Russell Armstrong. I have two pages since Google will not let you uh, uh, change the name or just the show name. It actually has to be your first and last name. So I actually have two pages on Google Plus. I will post a link on both of our pages where you can find it. 
you will see when the shows are, are getting ready to broadcast. Um, we truly had fun. Um, oh, yeah. I think this show is going to be a lot better than what we were doing before. Uh, unfortunately, some of our members, cast members, can't be here. Uh, we're going to work on those issues over the next couple of weeks. <coughs> Just bear with uh, us, people. Yeah. We are going to do a gaming show, uh, hopefully, sometime soon. Stacy and Chuck are going to be be running that. Chuck's going to be in charge of that. He just got him a computer, so I think um, they're going to start doing that. It probably won't be every week, because as you know, it takes a long time to come up with something for gaming, because um, there's not something every week you can talk about. <coughs> so you'll have an Xbox person and a PlayStation three a person, you know, and I may show up every once in a while just to say, hey. So um, yeah. uh, we are going to do an NASCAR show. Uh, it will not be live. Uh, it will actually be a podcast. Uh, Shane right now uh, doesn't have internet at home, so it's kind of hard for him to, but he is working on that. Um, and he may do video and he may just do audio. It will be posted on the YouTube channel and on the web page both web pages. So if you're in the NASCAR, um, Shane will have a, I don't know if it's going to be a 30 minute program or an hour. He'll have a little more freedom, you know, with they be able to do a NASCAR only show. And uh, we're going to do, uh, we are going to start talking to people. If you're interested, if you are at a wrestling show, indie, WWE, or whatever, if they allow you to video transmit from there. Uh, a lot of people can't transmit from some of the bigger arenas because there's no cell coverage. But some of the smaller shows, if you want to transmit YouTube channel videos, you can send me an email at mayhemnews.live uh, at gmail.com. I'll say it in a minute. You that is mayhemnewslive at gmail.com. You can let me know when you're going to be at a show and I will tell you how to send me the link link for your your YouTube uh, video and you can actually be a temporary reporter for Mayhem News Live. We appreciate it. We want to make sure that we get our indie folks out there. And I've said it before, Mayhem News and Mayhem News Live, um, me being the owner and general manager and editor of both, we support our indie wrestlers. Uh, anybody that wants to come on here, there is no fee. You're welcome to come on here and be a regular if you want. I don't care. You let me know and we'll put you out there. Um, now that I've actually been to an indie show and know what those guys go through to do a show, it's terrible. You know, you get in the ring, not only wrestle, but then you have to take the ring down too sometimes. Uh, it, makes, it makes you know that those guys earn the money they make. And that's why some of those people that were indie wrestlers and ended up on WWE, and TNA and some of the bigger shows, uh, we know what they did. What they did to get where they're at, they earned the notches in their belt. So we're going to promote them. Uh, if you are an indie wrestler, it doesn't matter if you're. And if you're, a t it doesn't matter. We'll interview anybody. You want to come on and talk about something you got going on, or you just want to promo your your character, promo yourself. I don't care if you're writing a book. You let us know, and we'll put you on the air. Um, we're and down to our last two minutes. And then if I can quickly like correct you on the video thing, uh -huh. I know for a fact because I've fact a fact uh, because I've been to quite a few WWE events. You cannot do video because they can yeah. actually take your stuff. And yeah. if you actually put put it, which happened with the Fandango, somebody had did a video of the crowd. And within like two minutes, as soon as the video got around, WWE already pulled it off the net. Yeah, and something okay. else, our, our videos are monetized here, so anything that's on here, um, like you'll notice, oh. our, even the stuff on the the little pictures we have are kind of fuzzed out where you can't really see them. Okay, we own everything on here, so I can't, but I can post I can post your your videos as long as it's okay. For you to video, but now if they come up in the middle of the show and say, "Hey, can't use video cameras," uh, most people do allow pictures. You can take pictures of yourself oh, yeah. at the show and send me a little note, and I'll 
I'll make a video to put on the YouTube channel. So, you know, I'm mainly saying for the... I'll say it in a minute. The indie show, because I know they don't mind. Oh, yeah. But uh, this it's has been Mayhem News WWE. Live, and we are out of time. And it's been great here. I appreciate Stacey Lynn for being here. So we are about to go off the air. Have a nice day. Make sure after what happened in Boston and Texas that you love your, you take a hold of your loved ones and hug them close and keep your eyes open, people. Um, an alert mind can stop things that happen more than someone that's not alert to their surroundings. So keep your eyes open, your family close, and keep, keep your head up. This has been Mayhem News Live. I'm Russell T. McLeos, and this is Stacy. Stacy, Lynn 89, we are gone. Bye, people.